How are you doing this morning? Can you wave your hands at your neighbor as we rise to our feet? Let's start to thank God for today. Make yours personal. Thank him. Thank him for specific things. God is an awesome God. Talk to your father. Talk to him. Father, thank you for who you are. Create in us a clean heart. Do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation. That is our desire. That is a prayer. Shall we pray? Create in me a clean heart. Oh Lord. And in your right spirit within me. Remember it's a prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew thy spirit within me. We're going to pray with Sam. 90 verse 11 and 12. He says, who knows the power of your anger? So as your fear, so is your wrath. For that reason, I say, so teach us the number of days aright, that we might gain a heart of wisdom. The reason for that prayer says, who knows the power of God's anger? That means anger has power. So as your fear is your wrath, may we not see the wrath of God. I can hear you, amen. <laughs> For this reason, we're going to ask him. He said, so, teach us the number of days all right, to gain a heart of wisdom. Are we ready to pray? Open my mouth and start to pray. Father, teach us the number of days all right. Teach us to number our days aright. Teach us, Father, to number our days aright. Teach us, Lord, to number our days aright. That we might gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days aright. That we might gain a heart of wisdom. Open your mouth and pray. Teach us to number our days aright. That we might gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days aright. That we might gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us, Father, to number our days aright, that we might gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days aright, that we might gain a heart of wisdom. Open mouth and pray. Rebo shondo do bok raka shede de de bok raka shada daba. Re de bok raka shede de bok raka shede de bo. Re de bok raka shede de bo. Teach us, Father, to number our days aright, that we might gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us the number of days aright. That I might gain a heart of wisdom. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I can hear your amen this morning. Listen. Life is a journey of lessons. It is grace for us to be able to see and perceive. To hear and understand. It is only God that makes it available. So don't take that prayer for granted. I like, um, you know, sometimes people, our hearts can be hard sometimes. 
And there are some proverbs that I, I hear from people. I like to learn from people. I remember pastor said even a mad person has something to teach you. For those who, who are still very opinionated about, yes, this is what I know. I am presumptuous with God. I want to share this proverb with you. It says, a tree that has not learned how to dance will be taught by the winds. A tree that has not learned how to dance will be taught by the winds. I'd rather have God teach me. Shall we pray again? Say, Father, teach me to number my days right. Teach us to number our days right. That I might gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days right. That I might gain a heart of wisdom. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are still praying. Creating us a clean heart. Creating me a clean heart. Oh Lord. And renew right spirit within me. Please make it personal. Creating me a clean heart. Oh Lord. And renew right spirit within me. Cast me not away. From your presence, O oh Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, yea, and renew thy spirit within me I praise you I praise you oh Lord I praise you I praise you oh Lord mm. One more time I lift my hands in praise of your name I lift my hands in praise of your name I sing praises to your name Tell him Oh Lord, praises to your name. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, mm. your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your Yes, yes, Praises to your name, Father. Ah. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. For your name is great and greatly to be we lift your name we lift your name we lift your name 
We lift your name. We call his name. We call his name. We call his name. We call his name. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. For we will say that you are good and all the miracles you've done has brought us joy and we are changed and all the hopes we have we place in you right now shall we tell him again and we will say that you are good and all the miracles you've done has brought us joy and we are changed and all the hopes we have we place in you right with the hands lifted to him we declare father we declare that we love you we declare everlasting love for you we declare Love you, Lord. Father, let your glory fill this house. Oh, Lord, let your presence fill our heart. Oh, Today, let this vessels offer unto you, yeah, the sacrifice of prayer. In our love, you alone are worthy. Father, in our home, you deserve all glory. Even Father, for today's service, Jesus, you are. Wave your hands and bless our Father. Tell him how much you love him. Express your love. Blow him a kiss. Blow him a kiss. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He's watching. I said, blow him a kiss. Are you shy to blow God a kiss? Yeah, 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 Glory be to God in the highest. If you love the Lord, let me hear it very loud. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Tell your neighbor good morning. 
Tell your neighbor, I'm happy to see you this morning. I can see that there are miracles all around you. What a faithful God we serve. He alone deserves the glory. He alone deserves the honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we have any testimonies, please let's go to the multipurpose hall. There's a pastor there to attend to you. Praise God. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Who does your hallelujah belong to? My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, it does, Jesus. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it.
Yala. Give him all the glory. He is the one we were made to worship. We call his name Jesus. We call your name Jesus this morning.
Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord
your hands together for the Lord. He alone deserves the glory. He alone deserves all the honor. He alone deserves all the adoration. Father, we adore you. We magnify your holy name. If not for you, 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 Father. All we can say is thank you for your love, for your tender mercies, for your loving kindness, for loving us recklessly, regardless of our inadequacies, regardless of our frailties. Father, we say thank you. For keeping us, we say thank you. For not allowing the devil to have the last laugh over us, we say thank you. Hey, Jacobu Tiwa. Hey, Jakashi Oluwatu. Hey, Jakayawere. Father, our faculties are intact. We say thank you for giving us peace in the midst of the storms. We say thank you. With your mighty hand, you've kept the enemy at bay. And with the other hand, you've given us peace. Father, we say thank you. From the depths of our hearts, we say thank you. If we had a thousand tongues to sing, it still won't be enough to sing the praises of our God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now the choir sang a song. Many of us didn't know that song. Tani mba fokwefun. Jesu ni ka fokwefun. Ka fori balefun. Ka faya balefun. Tori fe Jesu na she wala ye. God will grant us. How can I put it now? A deep understand, a deeper understanding of his love towards us. If we have that understanding, we'll go to rest. We'll, we'll stop fretting. We'll stop fretting. Father, we adore you. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You may please have your seats. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Showers, the last one in the month of October. Here we are, alive and well. We may not have all we want, but we have all we need. We have life, we have good health, and we have the Lord on our side. So if some things we're trusting God for are yet to manifest, don't give up. He that has kept you till this day has great plans for you. He won't leave you and he won't forsake you. Praise the name of Jesus. We have four testifiers this morning. And I'd like to call them up to please line up here. Brother Jude, Sister Ebele, Brother Precious, and Sister Grace Lawrence. Can you please come forward? We'll take Brother Jude first. Please encourage them as they come. Oh, 
by Jude Lawrence first, then Sister Ibele, then Brother Precious, then Sister Lawrence. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Church. I, I can summarize in a second, but let me start by saying I, I love this church. I love showers. <laughs> um, last year, yes, I accidentally lost my wife after five years' battle with cancer. Then, uh, while I was preparing to remove the morning clothes, and then my mother died also this year by July. And uh, because I had a gap of five years between my first daughter and my second daughter. When my first daughter left Covenant University five years ago, my second daughter is beginning her, just trying to begin her nursing program in Canada. So left right center, I was choked off financially. I didn't know what to do. And calling people was not the option available at all. I don't do that. So I sat down, I wrote out everything I need. I took it in my diary. So each showers, I will always come here before the 30 minutes before the church begin. I will lie down here praying, asking God to provide. Asking God to provide. I did it, I can remember three good times. Before the next shower making it for, God miraculously provided everything I need. So I have come here to return all the glory to Almighty God. Now I'm restful. I don't have financial pressure again. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the peace of God will guard your hearts continually in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Ibele. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Uh, let me just cut the long story short because it's a long story. It's about a month plus now, they kidnapped my brother-in-law. So it's a long story, but I'm going to cut it short. Just like the first testifier said, I love this church, I love Fountain of Life, and I love showers, I love every word. You know, each time I come for service, I will always go home with a word. And I thank God for Pastor Taiwo. I thank God for every word God is using him to proclaim upon our life. There was a service he told us to shout, there's going to be a rejoicing in the house. And I claimed that word. I told God, give me a testimony. I just want this story to be a testimony because no peace in the house again. If you call my mother, you know, they will just, in fact, there is no peace. I said, God, give me a testimony that I want that shout in the house. Just last Sunday, after every said and done, after the money has spent and all that, I don't even know how God did it because we are like, God, it's up to you. This man will come out of our life and on hot. And on Sunday night, we had that shout in the house. He came out on hot. He came out on hot. There was joy in the house. There was joy. The whole neighborhood. You call my mother-in-law, everybody will be happy. You call the wife, he was happy. Lord, I give you all the praise. Ah, despite all, he told us how people will be. They killed people, how people will fall sick, nobody to take care of them. But he was safe. He came out on hot. To God be all the glory. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. And there'll be shouts of joy in our homes too, in the name of Jesus. Let me just add a bit to her testimony. I mean, it's like they were talking to two different gangs. They didn't know which one was the authentic one. And they were both collecting money. They were asking for millions, which they didn't have. And they kept on negotiating. They were paying some, they said, bring more. Eventually, they paid, I think it was 100,000. I don't know when our nation turned to this, where we will be bargaining over human life, like we're pricing meat. God will put an end to this in Jesus' name. 
and God will trouble the camp of the kidnappers in the name of Jesus. And for those that have turned this to a business, God will shut down those businesses in the name of Jesus. And as many as are still being held, held by these kidnappers, we, we decree their release. They'll be left alive and well in the name of Jesus. And for those that are that are suffering by the virtue of this gold, your peace will keep them and you will strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Please let's not stop praying for this nation. I mean, it's, it's sad at how this thing has degenerated. It used to be so far away, but now it's just next door. They kidnapped somebody for, for a charge card. Never again. Never again. Never again in Jesus' name. Brother Precious, straight to the point, sir. Praise the Lord. Yeah. In 2005, I was diagnosed with a heart condition after being admitted in the Grace Free Medical Center for one week. So I was given a referral letter to lawsuit. So after several consultations with the doctors, so after I discovered how much I was going to take to, for the surgery, I something said with me, I saw people that they have don't solve before they are no better off. There are some they are sick having so up. So they don't say you are not so to be here. Why not? And then you go, why not? And I left. And when I left the place, they were calling me and say you are the next person to go to the thought. I just left. I was I was I was I can't go. I say this is what was going to make Slow down, sir. We can't hear you. They were, so after several consultations with the doctor, so I I was supposed to be the next next person to go to the doctor to the consultation. So something said within me, we are not supposed to be here. You are, you are better than this. So I now left. So as I was not going, they now called me, they said, I'm the next, I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'll be back. So I challenged God and said, if this was going to be why I'm going to leave this head. I'm ready to prepare, I was going to challenge God, so I left. So some months back, I gave a testimony in church, in the old church, on, th on the Thursday showers. On my way back to the cantonment, to, on the other afternoon, so I, my stomach started shredding up. All of a sudden, I passed that. I was not lying down on the floor on my back. I couldn't say to so that I was going, me back for the, the one that not saw me, they not tried, I not told them I they took me to the house. So I just managed and I went to the house. Then on the Sunday, that same week, I went to church and on the Sunday, so during the service, I passed out during the service. So I saw myself in a big mansion, my spirit in a big mansion. And I wonder what was, what was this? So I saw a star, I looked up, I saw a star, and the star was coming closer to me. It was a big, it, the more it came closer to me, it was the, the shape of the man, the tallest man I can ever see. He was wearing a garment. The garment was so bright, so bright. Things were coming out of his, dropping from his garment and was landing on me. So I tried to reason it. So I said, let's look at I tried to look at the from the head. Burning, a burning fire. The only thing I can use to describe it is like when the sun is a full blast. So it was when pastor is preaching, maybe on the Sunday, many people are not, uh, those in the people are saying, people, people shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So on the seventh, hallelujah, that brought me back to, like, so I don't come back, and when I came back, it was, it was the poor cell water on my body. That's how God, that's how God healed me miraculously. And since then, since 2015 now, I have run, I have run Lagos, I said Van Lagos City Marathon, from more than 50 kilometers, and I have run it, and I'm held and healthy, I give glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for supernaturally healing you. And there'll be no reoccurrence in the name of Jesus. This happened in 2005 in the old auditorium. Until today, no symptoms. God is a good God. I mean, those of us that are healthy and fit to marathon, <laughs> praise God. But I mean, he did it and thank God for that. Praise the name of Jesus. Sister Grace, please come. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. I want to give this testimony to the glory of God. I want to thank God for uh, manifesting his word in my life. On Sunday, uh, the promise for the week was um, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. He said we are a chosen generation that in time past, we didn't have mercy, but now we have mercy. I want to thank God for that mercy speaking for me yesterday. My younger sister asked me to escort her to Balogun Market to get something. So I went with her, not with the mind to get my own things. So um, while I was shopping for her, in the children's line, I saw some t-shirt. 
I was telling her that I don't have money that um, this T-shirt that Bright needs it and most of her clo his clothes is now on the size. So she encouraged me to use the little I have and just get a few. So I came out, used ATM, went back and got those T-shirts. As we were done and we were coming out, I saw snacks, I said that they are already home, that something to pacify them for waiting for me. So I stopped the malam, those ones that use barrel to sell snacks and chocolate. I got a few, I dropped the nylon of the T-shirt that I bought on the barrel. So as I was done paying him, I forgot the T-shirt on the barrel. Like 10 minutes walk from the malam, I remembered and now ran back. He left the spot he was standing. I started looking for him. I was just very angry. I said, I didn't even have this money. And I will now throw it away like that. I was just asking the Holy Spirit to help me. So three streets away from where I started searching for him, I found him. And I didn't see the nylon. I was telling him that I left my nylon on his barrow. He said, no, that he didn't see if I need nylon. He was giving me empty nylon. I said, no, my nylon that I bought t-shirt, that I mistakenly dropped it here. He said that the nylon was not there. He was now shouting. So as I wanted to walk away, I heard clearly, lift the wood. I now went back. I wanted to lift the wood. He didn't allow me. I said that I left it there. So as he was distracted by the car that was parking, I now lifted the wood. Behold, I saw the nylon there. And I removed it. I was telling him, this is the nylon. He said he, said he didn't know how he got there. So I didn't even know that guys were coming from behind. So one man just came to me and blink and blink. So guys were now asking me, what happened? What happened? I saw them with tires. The Malam guy that came to me and was blinking, I now told the guys, ah, ah, it's nothing. He said, it's nothing. We heard somebody so let's just finish him. I said nothing. I just took the nylon and walked away. It's not up to one minute. The Malam guy came to me and said, Madam, God bless you for saving that guy's life. I just want to thank God for saving me from that everlasting guilt because I wouldn't have been able to forgive myself if something had happened to him. And I thank God for saving me of that my son's t-shirt. Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Whatever we have lost, there will be restoration. In the name of Jesus. Whatever men try to take up from us unjustly, God will reveal it to us and we shall recover it in Jesus' name. And we see how cheap life is. We thank God. That is why we cannot stop praying for Nigeria. People have lost their lives just like that over nothing. Over a sachet of pure water. Or by a false alarm. Nobody will ask questions. They just shout, Ole, where? There. End of story. God forbid. We're not, we're not be found in the wrong place at the wrong time in Jesus' name. God will continue to order our steps in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we please bring out our offerings to thank God for all he has done in our lives. We have the testimonies and what God has done for them. He can do much more for you too in the name of Jesus. So can we please rise to our feet with our offerings and just bless God. Heavenly Father, we say thank you for this privilege we have once again to bring our offerings to you. We ask, Lord, that these offerings find pleasure in your sight in the name of Jesus. And as our hands are up in abundance, may they never come down due to lack or penury in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for perfecting all that concerns us. To the glory of your holy name alone, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning, pastors. A um, few months ago, God uh, blessed me with a song, and I'd like to share with us. It's tied to the Yahweh. I hope you're blessed by it. Yahweh is your name. Yahweh is your name. Yahweh is your name, Alpha and Omega. Yahweh is your name. Yahweh is your name. Yahweh is your name, Mighty God.
glory to the King eternal. Almighty God is His. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh is Your name. Yahweh is Your name. Yahweh is Your name.
Call him Yahweh is your name Yahweh is your name Alpha and Omega Alpha and Omega Yahweh is your name Yahweh is your name It's the beginning and the end Yahweh is your name Beginning and the end such a blessing brother Sam that's a beautiful worship song let's give it up to the Lord hallelujah eh? 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 give it up to the Lord like that ah 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 hallelujah let us do it properly I didn't say to brother Sam I didn't say to me I didn't say to you I said to the Lord Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take one song before we proceed. Ah, Grace Levi's. Don't be singing songs halfway. Aye, 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 aye. The sentences that follow it. Ha. Oh, yeah. Let us sing that song. Aye, 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 aye. Aye, aye. Aye, 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 aye. Aye, aye. Aye, 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 aye. Aye, aye. Aye, 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 aye. Relationship with different people. There's some way, there's a way your children can tune you. Mm. They call you a certain name or start a sentence in a certain way, and you yourself know that they've got you. There's a way you can call your husband. Hell! And he knows this woman has sunk me. Whatever she's asking for, she has got it. Vice versa. There's a way your husband can tell you. Ah, we are made in the image of God. There are some names you will call God. There is a way you will come to God. And God knows, ha, this my daughter has understanding. This is one of those songs. We're declaring he's the eternal God. What can withstand the eternal God? You're declaring that you are the rock 
on which I have placed my whole life. That is why that song, it could not just be a year a year. We had to sing it. I'm telling you, there are some, he's not the only one, no. Me, I know my father. There are some roses. When he sees me at that junction, he knows that, ah, Tosin, she hold me today. So please, I want you to sing and dance. The entirety of our existence is placed upon the nature of the eternal God. Nothing can withstand eternity. He was before time. He's in time. He steps out of time when it is necessary. He holds time in his hands. So he's never late. I don't know what you are believing God for. I don't know what area of your life you think you've stepped out of time. I don't know what area of your life the world has said uh, that it can't happen. The area of your life that you yourself you have decided that it is over. And Jehovah says, I have not even started. So I want you to offer him this. You know, I did not, did I know they were going to sing this song this morning? But as they sang it halfway, ah, I said, chai. And then the Holy Ghost started downloading what I'm saying. So please, it's a sacrifice. He's our eternal God. Nothing can withstand eternity. And he holds it in his hands. For your sake and for my sake. Don't change the song. Oh yeah. A year, a year, a year, a year, a year, a year. Give God your dance. A year, a year, a year, a year.
our eternal God who cannot change, who cannot fail. Our eternal God, our rock on whom we lay our lives and destinies. Father, we worship. This house, you are our rock. You are eternal rock. And our eyes are fixed upon you. And we know you will not fail. Father, we worship you. Accept our worship this morning. Accept our praise. Accept our love. Accept our lives all over again. In Jesus' name we have worship. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. Hallelujah. It gives me great pleasure to bring up my sister this morning to deliver the word from the throne of grace. And I say it not as a cliche. Fasten your seatbelt. Or else you might fall off, but it is need to glory. But I mean it when I say fasten your seatbelt. Please welcome with me, Pastor Mary Fahemi. <laughs> the Lord. Let's be seated, please. Thank you very much. All the glory be unto the Lord. Please wait. I want to appreciate the set man over this house, my father in the Lord, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, for this opportunity. We can never be able to thank him enough for times like this. Times like these are times you don't pray for. We always want pastor to be around. Because when you have to do what I'm doing, I won't tell you the details. Fill in the gaps. Praise the Lord. So, daddy, wherever you are right now, I want you to know that this daughter appreciates you. May the Lord continually the, increase the oil of the unction upon your head. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord satisfy the longing of your heart in the name of Jesus. May it be always well with you in the name of Jesus. And you will lose none of us in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray the same for Pastor Nomti. I say, Lord, we all are children. We rise and we call her blessed. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Daily as I live, Often as I breathe, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Daily as I live, often as I breathe, let my whole life Of your 
For the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding unto the simple. Become as your children this morning. That Lord you will touch us. That the word you have spoken concerning each and every one of us. We say amen meaning let there be a fulfillment and manifestation in each and every one of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask oh God that the Holy Spirit will be awesome in this place today. We welcome you, sweet Holy Spirit. We ask, oh God, that you will visit each person and you will yet visit all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I hide myself behind the cross of Calvary and I ask, oh God, that you will speak your word through me. May no man, no woman see or hear me. May it be all about you today. Take all the praise. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. In Jesus' name. Let's be seated, please. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to move very fast. Please let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. I'll pick just three words there. Let's all read the first three words of 1 Corinthians 1 9. What does it say? Can I hear you please? God is faithful. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. God is faithful. So if you're telling me that God is faithful, I'm saying experience it. God is faithful. Experience it. I want us to touch ourselves and say God is faithful. I will experience it. You have heard that God is faithful. You have seen it in the lives of people. But we have come to the point in time when we need to be the ones holding the microphone and telling people, God is faithful in my life. And I'm here to shout about it. Last week, our Father in the Lord ended the service on the note that we should keep on confessing the word of God. That regardless of what we faced, we should keep on speaking the word of God. And that if there's anything that will change, it will be our situations. If there's anything that will, if there's anything that will run away, it will be the devil, not us. But the word of God is settled forever. Psalm 118 verse 89. Let's start from why is it that when we confess the word, we don't see the effect. Let's just check ourselves a bit. Psalm 118 verse 89. Quickly. It says forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Forever. It does not matter the time. Pastor Tosi was talking about God being in the past, present, moving out of time and still holding time. Forever. It does not matter your location on the face of the earth forever. It does not matter the situation you are
are going through forever. It does not matter the time of the day that you are speaking the word of God. Forever. It is settled. It is settled. The challenge is having that settled work come to life in our lives. That is the challenge. There's no problem with the word of God. If there's any challenges with us, it's on this side of heaven. Isaiah 55, please. Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, 11 place. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. There's an assurance concerning the word that you have been given. There's an assurance from heaven. That that word that has been spoken into your life will not return. Until it has performed. When you are given an errand, when you are put on an assignment, you do not be going to look at the faces of the people you are going to deliver. You remember the one who has sent you. And each time the word goes forth, the word remembers that it was released from the mouth of the creator. And it, do, it, cannot, it cannot return void. By the time it's coming back, it must come back accomplished in each of our lives. Because that is when the word is fulfilled. So there's no problem with the word. So the word that we are being given, the word that we are confessing, does not have a problem. But then why is it that we have been speaking the word all this while and we are not seeing results? Please, can I call Pastor Lara and Pastor Tolu? Please, Pastor Tino and Pastor Lara, please come forward. They are going to assist me quickly to save time. Let's quickly open to James chapter 1, verses 6 and 8. Put one here, please. Put one here then. Don't worry. Put one. Yes. No. Take. No. Now we're going to demonstrate something this morning. Please, I want you to confirm if those bottles are, if the water is pure or not, if the water is bottled water. So which means that at the end of the day, you can drink it after this experiment. Okay, can we have the water poured into the jars? Pour the water into the jars, please. We're on the altar, so we try not to spill. Yes. Pour your water into, pour, yes. Thank you. You, you didn't remove your cup. <laughs> Sorry, please. Put the cup beside. No, beside. Put your jar, please. Put your jar of water here, covered. Put this in between the cup and the, cover your jar of water, please. No, I want this opened. Just leave it open for me. I'll call you back, please. I'll call. Yes. Okay, thank you. Please take your seats. Now, I want us to see these two trees. Let me say this as an aside. Often times when I come here, I demonstrate. My husband said I should let you know. I retired as a lecturer. So this teaching thing, you know, when you have to teach with um, teaching aids, so please do pardon me if at any time you feel offended. No? I want this, I want every one of us to see this as our hearts. Our hearts with the word of God. The Bible talks of the word of God as water. 
So what we have done is to put the word of God in its purity into every heart. But you see, as we go on, something will begin to happen to this water in the jars. So please just pay attention, but don't lose focus. Let's go to James chapter 1 verses 6 to 8. James 1, 6 to 8. Okay. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man unstable in all his ways. I'm going to put doubt in the water now. What is here is soap. So I've added doubt to the water. The Bible says that when you are double-minded, it's like when you, you decide you are going somewhere. You say, oh, we are going to Oligo. You're on the way to Oligo. And then you say, no, we are going to Yaba. And no, we are going to Ojota. There's confusion. The word should be clear. What are you saying? By the stress of Jesus, I've been made whole. Ah, is the word working like this? I still feel this pain. No. I think I have to go and take the injection. I don't think this word is working. By the stripes of Jesus have been made whole. We have to keep on pounding the word. We have to keep on speaking the word. Doubt will come, but we should resist doubt. Because it is natural for the environment to question us. That look at the evidence before you. Look at the facts. But the truth of the matter is the facts will change. The truth will never change. The facts will change, but the truth of the word of God will never change. So are we double-minded? When we say we, we confess the word of God, are we double-minded? The Yorubas will say, Elenu Meji, that you have two mouths. You say this and you say that. Decide. When God says it, he stands by what he has said. So let us speak faith without doubting. Matthew 12, 33 to 34. Matthew 12, 33 to 34. Matthew chapter 12, please. He says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you be in evil? Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of what you have in your heart, your mouth will speak. So if you, do, if you have the word of God in your mouth, you will speak the word. When you don't have the word, you will not speak the word. And when you don't speak the word, we will not get the results. Is that simple enough? We'll still come back to this abundance of the heart. We cannot function on our own terms. Let us come into Christ, get cleansed by his blood, and be righteous. Let us be in right standing with God. The sons of Sceva, they tried to adulterate the anointing. But when the demons came on them, said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Means that for you to have the word of God effective in your life, you must come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You must come into partnership and fellowship with the Lord. And I pray that today before the end of the service, you will do it in Jesus' name. James chapter 3, 8 to 12. James chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. But the tongue, James chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. How do they know you in your neighborhood? Are you known as the walking epistle of Jesus? Or you are the one whose voice shouts the loudest? If they want to know the person that knows how to curse and to make me shed that, 
John said, go to number. To ba shake pe kan fun e. O tutan. Why should you be known as a lepe? Of all the titles in the world, why should it be that when they want to mention, oh, and actually, that person is the person that curses the most. And when that person curses, ah, it is settled. Why are we not known as people that open our mouths and we bless? And the blessings, they stick. Because there's manifestation in the lives of the people that we sow these blessings into. Psalm 66 verse 8. We're just looking at why the word is not performing for us. Psalm 66 verse 8. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Are we playing with sin? Are we saying we're in the season of grace and let frivolity continue? No. Jesus paid the price for us. Oh, bless. 66. Sorry. That must be 18. 66, 18, please. 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Let's not play with sin. Sin is a reproach unto God. Righteousness exalts a nation. We are being blessed in this season of grace. But there are some things we do now. If we are done in the Old Testament, there's no court of law. Instant justice. Let's go to James 4, 2 to 3, please. James 4, 2 to 3. James chapter 4, 2 to 3. You lost and have not. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Throughout the service last week and in the course of preaching about the word in the last few weeks, pastor has kept on saying something. He said, God, it is all about your glory. When we confess the word, Father, that legs us is what I want next. Why? Is it for evangelism? Or when next I go to the village, let them know I've arrived. God, I want a, a mansion in Banana Island. Sister Pastor Tosin is living. No, I, I don't want to live in her neighborhood. I want something bigger. That is competition. What we are asking, what we are confessing the word for. Is it going to bring about the glory of God in our lives? We are told on Sunday the promise for the week. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we will show for the praises of him who has called us out of darkness to show for the glory of God in our lives. There is a purpose to our calling. There is a purpose to all that God has released into our lives. And we need to align ourselves with the purpose of God. So that we can actually get the result that is desired. So going forward, what do we do? First, what is in our heart? What is in our heart? You know, I said something about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now we want to speak. Pastor Tino, please. Thank you so much. I'll ask her to add these to that water. A bit of it, thank you. The other bottle, please, as well. Yes. Now, whatever these elements represent in our lives, we all started with the pure word of God. As we came across experiences in life, as we came across people, as we experienced situations, 
The things we saw with our eyes, they deposited something in our hearts. The words we spoke deposited something in our hearts. The things we heard deposited something in our hearts. And now, the same word that we started with has become what? Polluted. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Pastor Tino, please pause now. This represents our hearts. We have the word of God. This will now represent our mouths. Please pour part of this into this. Out of the abundance of the heart, you didn't stay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, he's still tilted. Okay, now. Okay. Now, the mouth is going to speak words now. This represents our lives. This represents our situations. And we want the word that we speak to have an effect. Please, can you, Poma? Okay, thank you. Now, my question is this. Is this clear for every one of us to see, please? Okay. Is this the same color that we started with, please? Now, if I were to ask any one of us here to drink this, would you be willing to? Can I have a volunteer, please? But that's what we're doing to our lives. Thank you, ma'am. Pastor Lara, please, can I have it, please? This is the word of God that has remained as God has put it in our hearts. Situations have come as they came. No, sorry. Can I have you bring the three elements, please? The three. As she says. Now, situations have come. Now, what's going to happen is this. She's going to try and pour these into this and she has to resist. Can we see it, please? You have to resist. These things come. You can see. She has maintained the purity of the word of God in the jar. The challenges came. Situations came. The storms of life came. They happened to all of us. The choice is yours. Do you want to hold on to the word of God as it is? Or you want to have the polluted word of God? When it is polluted, it cannot bring the desired result. The word that God sent into our lives is what we are holding here. The pure, unadulterated word of God. That is what brings results. Not the one that we have mixed with our feelings, our emotions. It cannot happen. But then I will say, no, you have tainted the word. The assignment was speak the word. Speak the word as you were given. Speak the word as you, were, as you read. Speak the word that was told to you. Speak the word in your heart. You were not given any assignment to do anything to the word. The challenges will come. Jesus said there will be tribulations. But I have overcome. I have overcome. I have overcome. You have a choice to allow. Now, I want you to pour the same water out of the abundance. The mouth speaks. No? Into the bottle. Please remember that the jar represents our hearts. The bottle represents our mouths. And the cup represents our lives or situations. Okay, okay, sis. Now, can we have a bit in the cup, please? Now, the mouth is speaking. The mouth is releasing the word into the life, into the situation. Now, are you willing to take a sip of it, please? <laughs> Thank you, Maz. God bless you. The 
the word of God has no issue. When we are told to speak the word, we reason it out. When we are told to speak the word, we stand in front of the mountain and say, I only have one sentence and see how big, how tall the mountain is. You are told to speak the word. You look down into the valley and say, ah, Ojingoni is very deep. You are not asked to consider the circumstances. You are given an assignment like a deaf person. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Which word? The word of God. The word that God gave you. The words that you read in the Bible. The word that you memorized. The promises that have been coming. Speak the word. So when this word is not bringing forth. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4. You have to remember who you are. You have to remember who you are. We go back to 1 Peter 2 9. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. Ecclesiastes 8 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say to him, What are you doing? We are royalty. We are kings. We don't need anybody to give us a local title. The moment we came into the kingdom of God, we became royal priesthood. It means that when I stand in the name of the Lord and I release the word of God, everything in creation understands. Everything in creation Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Verse 2, The world and all they that dwell therein. He has founded, he has established the foundations in the depths. He says, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. And Tony or Wami Mo Atia Yafufu. And Scott Bill Corres, okay, say, I saw to cause a great one. On your rebu could bad your wall, Luatio, Dodon your wall, Lorry Ballare. That is for you to be a recipient of the blessings of God. There is a divine qualification. You don't stand in your own righteousness. You stand in the finished work of the cross. Jesus died and resurrected. He says, all authority that the Father has given unto me, I release unto you. So we carry authority. We are kings. And that is why when we worship the Lord, we say you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of Lords. We are not talking about him being first the kings of our village kings. No. He's the king over us all as kings. So when we speak, let, that, let us have this consciousness that we are children of the creator of the heavens and the earth. He spoke everything into creation. And he sustains everything, book of Hebrews, with his word. And it's the word of God that will bring the transformation that we desire. Because the word of God is creative. Praise the Lord. Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8. We are moving because we want the word to be real in our lives. Joshua 1.8, please. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. You cannot meditate what you have not read now. So for you to meditate and to speak, there has to be a reading first. In the midst of all our busyness, do we take time to know what God has promised? Do we take time to say, this is the word I want to chew and chew and chew and chew until it is real to me? 
It says, this book of the law shall not, de shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Yes, please. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Which means there are some successes that are not good. But God is saying we will have good success. When your income is equal to expenditure, that is not good success. For me, I want my income to be higher than my expenditure. So by the time I've settled all my bills, I still have left over. Praise the Lord. So you speak the word of God. You keep on confessing. You are not moved by what you see, what you hear, what you feel. You are not moved. You just hold on to the word of God. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, what does it say? He says, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. When we doubt, it's like putting the, the car in forward movement and then while moving, we reverse again. Of course, the car will stop. Our situations make us to doubt. Length of time make us to doubt. A lot of things around us, or you hear somebody that something happened to, and say, oh, hey, that thing too might happen to me. I think it will happen to me. I'm sure it will happen to me. What has happened? I've dropped the confession of the word of God. And I'm speaking my thoughts. But what I've been assigned to do is to not allow the book of the law to depart out of my mouth. If I meet you in the morning and I say, Pastor Tosi, good morning. After she has said good morning, God bless you. You would like to meet somebody like that. But if you meet somebody, and, ah, Pastor Tosi, please, I need early in the morning. If every time that person comes and it is, I need, I need, I need, I don't have, how would you feel? But if somebody were to come to you early in the morning and should meet you and say, God bless you, ma'am. Thank you for yesterday. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. You will want to meet such people. This book of the law shall not depart out of our mouths. Confront every situation with the word of God. The doctors will say what they want to say. As they say, so the owner of the mouth can use it as the person desires. But you are the one, like we saw in the demonstration, that will not allow those negative words to land in your life. You have a choice. Miles Monroe said the teacher that taught him grade 6 told him, you can never amount to anything. But he did not allow from his island in the remote Pacific, we all have heard of the name of the person that the teacher said will amount to nothing. Hold on to the word of God. The word of the, of the Lord is the sure assurance that you have. Jabez, the Bible says that his mother named him Jabez. He said, because I've had him in sorrow. But one day this guy got up and said, ah, ah. Why is it that every time they call me, they say, sorrow. Said, enough is enough. Holy anger rose up in him. And said, no longer will I bear this name. Ah! They will have to coin new names. And I'm sure after that prayer, they had to change his name. Bobo Lowo Ijo. Rich man, come here. When God does miracles for us, the new names of God, we give God the name in ceremony. That's what I tell myself. Each miracle that God does for me, I give him a new name. The 
The one that delivers, the one that has no one. Adurotini Lodjo Ishuro. The one that sticks closer than a brother. Obatiki Idojutini. The king that never allows you to see shame. Eleti Ofe, Eleti Baroye. The one that has ears and will listen to your rantings without saying, please, I'm tired. Obata Asaba. The king that we can run on to. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the unchanging God. The one that wipes the tears off the faces of women. The king who is the comforter. There are some names that you will not find in any book. But by the time you look deep within you, you look into your life. You tell yourself, henceforth, like Pastor Tosin was saying this morning, there are some names that when you mention those names, I have a friend in this church where we had our first child. She named that boy Agbelebu Jesu Sheji. What does it mean? This is what the cross of Jesus has done. And that stands as a testimony that his death was not in vain. But we had the second one. I named it Feyishi Kemi. Oluwa Feyishi Kemi. That is, God gave me this one to pamper me. She just said, I want to pamper you. Just dashed me. And when we look at the names of our children as women, those names also give the testimony surrounding the births of those children. Beloved, Let's quickly go to Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 4. Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 4, as I begin to round up. Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 4. Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 4, please. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. Next place. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you. To know what was in your heart. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. Next place. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know. Nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Whatever you are going through, my brother, my sister, God is never late concerning his promises. He has said it. His word is settled. He has said it. We started on the note of God is faithful. Experience it. How do we experience it? Yes, you are going through the wilderness experience this morning. You're looking at it and you're telling yourself, I don't think it will do it. Let me share a testimony with you. After I got married, I had two miscarriages. And each time, there will be children's dedication in the old church. By the time I'll be stepping down from the altar, a pastor will hold my hand. And he will say, no giving up. As you have carried somebody else's child here, you will return with yours. And I received it. I kept on troubling the doctor. I want to be pregnant now. You know, there's an adage in Yoruba land that when a woman does not have a child in a husband's house, you don't have a seat. Oh, till read Joko. So we pursued this issue of children. And so I kept on saying, I must have, oh, 
I must have. Say, go and enjoy your husband. I must have. I must have. Anyway, the, to cut the long story short, I got pregnant. And then I went to the hospital. And they said, because of my age, I was over 40, I was now 44. And then they now said, because of my age, I had to be on bed rest. But there was an assignment that I was handling for the church in the Bible, um, Bible school, Bible college at that time. So that day, after pastor has said, tell her not to come again. Somebody is laughing. I don't want to say it was pastor. Don't say I won't look in that direction. I told myself, father, as I go, help me, cover me, shield me. I got to the road in front of the Bible college. I looked up. I looked down. I stepped out of the car and stepped, I told me, into the premises. And lo and behold, it was Pastor that was with me. Actually, as I was doing like this, I'm doing like this. He stood behind me and was looking at me. He said, Kilowashi. He said, What are you here to do? I said, Excuse my assignment. I'm going to leave you with what he left with me those years ago. Pastor said, the testimony is not getting pregnant. The full testimony is not getting pregnant. You have been pregnant twice and you have lost the pregnancy. Said the fullness of your testimony is when you have had a safe delivery. You have carried your pregnancy full term. You have delivered. You have named your child and you have taken of that child and that child has grown up. He said, that is the testimony. Today I speak and I challenge each one of us. Let's go and get the full testimony. Let us not stay with the pregnancy. Let us tell ourselves, I must return with the full pregnant, with the full testimony. The full tes testimony is that regardless of what I go through, a woman goes through a lot in pregnancy, but she does not tell the doctor, remove the baby and let me be free. She decides to go on with it. Days of joy, days of lack, days of pain, days of sleeplessness, because she's looking at a goal, the day when they will call her, Iyamo. She's waiting for that new name. Why are we not fighting for the new name that God wants to put on our lives? Why are we not fighting for the word of God to be made real in our lives? Why are we coming back and telling God your word is not true? Why are we showing the world what the Lord does not want them to see? The Lord wants them to see his glory on our lives. He has given us the key. The key is the word of God. The key is confessing the word. The key is believing the word regardless of what the doctors have said. The key is holding on to the word regardless of the pain in your body. The key is saying that it will not be, it shall not stand if the one Lord has not said it. My child will go forward. It does not matter what has been happening in my pedigree. This time will be different because the word of God says, I will level mountains before my children. I will exalt valleys and the crooked ways shall be made plain. It shall be different because the Bible says, I will lay my hands upon the thing to do and I will prosper. They might have been getting poor in my family. But with the word of God, I will return with my sheaves of thanksgiving. I will say my case is different. And when I return, I will say it is the glory of the Lord. When are we going to rise and fight for it? When are we going to stand our ground? Even if nobody joins you. Even if nobody celebrates you. Nobody celebrates somebody that is on the way. The world celebrates achievers. If nobody's clapping to cheer you, why don't you cheer yourself on with the word of God? You think you're alone, you're not alone. He said, I will never leave you, don't forsake you. Even until the end of time. You look at your pocket today, there's nothing. But we have the God that is the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. We have 
the one that gave you the children. And if only we will come back to him and say, Father, help me. Don't let me be put to shame. And you keep on confessing the word. Somebody told you that your child will not make it. And you believed it and you said it to that child. But you have authority as a king in the kingdom to speak the word and say, no, I reject it. I will only give birth to signs and wonders. You are a sign, you are a wonder. And you will manifest. Your husband is going through tough times. And you are proud to say you are the wife of somebody that is not achieving. Abba, eh? It stops today. He gets so much, you tell him, my darling, my king, my lord, we might be soaking Gary today. We will get to the point where we will do what? A la carte. You might have gone out today, but I tell you, the lord that we serve is the one true God. You will go out, you will come in blessed in the name of Jesus. The lies will fall for you in pleasant places. The Bible says, whoso finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor. I am a carrier of favor for your life. And I declare that favor will come down from heaven for you because you are my husband. You have chosen me and you connect with favor. And then that man goes out and says, I have favor in my house. Even if the door does not want to open, you have to open because I come with favor. Let us work the word of God. Let, us, let this word become flesh in our lives and situations. It is not difficult, my brethren. Problem is not with God. The words that have been spoken, they have gone forth. The question is, as long as we allow everything to pollute the word of God, if we cannot drink the water that has soap, if we cannot drink this water that is polluted and colored, let us maintain the confession of our faith. If I were to, Pastor Lara, please, this last thing, one second, please, I'm sorry. Please, could you bring the word? Now, this is the, I don't want us to feel that, please, can you bring your jar of water, jar of water? I don't want us to feel that because this water is like this, it cannot change. We are going to show you something now. Please watch. Please pour into my cup. Pour, pour, pour. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Okay. Even if our hearts have been polluted as we put in the pure word of God the change comes don't stay with a polluted heart don't stay with a heart that will not allow the word of God to germinate in your life the more you pour the word the better the purer the stronger your heart begins how are you going out of this place this morning? Do you want to remain the same? This was how we came in. Or you want to have a transformed heart? Let's rise to our feet. We have heard the word. Just two things I'm going to say before I step down. I've overshot my time, I'm sorry. If you are here in this auditorium and you do not know the Lord, even if you are online and you are connecting with us and you like to give your life to Christ, if you are here, you can signify with a show of hands I'd like to partner with Jesus. Or you want to rededicate your life to this King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one that is able to bring forth a transformation. Wherever you are, please raise your hand. And let's all say this together as a church. Lord Jesus, please let's join them. Lord Jesus, this day I confess 
that I've been a sinner. But you are my savior. This day, I connect with you. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my life and make my life whole. In your holy name I pray. Father Lord, we thank you for everyone that gave their lives to Christ, either here on site or online. We dedicate them unto you and we ask, O oh God, that you will watch over them, nurture them till they become trees of righteousness, vessels for the master's use. In the mighty name of Jesus. In one minute, please, as we close, I want you to say something today. Say something about that situation. Say a word concerning that situation in one minute. What is that situation that you have battled with before now? What is that situation that looked intimidating before you came into the service this morning? Say a word, say a word, say a word that you are standing upon. And you say that, Father, I will return with testimonies based on the word I'm speaking today. I will return with testimonies to your presence because this is what I brought before you today. Speak that word to the Lord this morning. Speak that word to that situation this morning. Speak that word in face of the situation and tell the Lord that, Father, I am receiving the fullness of the blessings that you have ordained for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for this day. We ask, oh God, that Lord, as we have spoken, Father, may we come back with our testimonies to the praise and to the glory of the name of the Lord. And let's sing this song together that I started with. Let the church say amen. Let the church Say amen. God has spoken. Let the church, Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say. Give it up to the Lord, Pastor Mary. Thank you so much. That was an incredible blessing. I told you, you say, you say I did not lie. I did, Abby, did I lie? Uh -huh. All the glory be unto God. Thank you so much, Pastor Mary. That came from the presence of the Lord. We're going to close and I just want to encourage us. Don't let it just be a good message. Let us put it into practice. Like she got us to do. Let us confess the word. There is no area of our lives that there is not a word about. It's for us to find it. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we please share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please pause. If you were not here when we took the offering, uh, please still give your offering. The ushers will be by the door. Offering is part of our worship. Don't say, ah, thank God, they've given you offering. No. There's no thank God like that. Always have, make a commitment in your heart that for every service, you will give the Lord an offering. It's in the Bible. It's not about us. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us for the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. God bless you.
Dance, 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 dance,